Hi my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. You guys asked me for kind of like a play-by-play -play of my last visit and you said you love when I give you kind of that re-encounter of what happened. Ho ho ho! Careful what you wish for. My goodness, do I have a story for you. So go grab yourself some coffee, some water. This is going to be a good whoo, dramatic one. If you're interested in First of all, what happened to me at Visit This Weekend? Second of all, how my rights are violated and I might have to call an attorney and lawyer up as they say on the inside, please keep watching. <sighs> you guys, there was drama. I filmed this story literally as I was driving home from Visit, but unfortunately my camera froze. So we're going to do it again. And I kind of think it's better. So I had a chance to sort through my thoughts and my feelings and I can give you this play by play account in a better way. So what happened was Saturday, I go to visit Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, really nothing out of the ordinary happened until Adam came out from the back. We were all processed as normal. They actually were on time. There really wasn't anything out of the ordinary that happened except for when Adam came out, when the inmates come out from the back, they have to bring their ID to the front, leave their ID there, check in kind of with the officer that is running the visit room that day and then go and sit, find us. They're told where we're sitting. If we're not in our seats, maybe we're up at the vending machines or in the bathroom and they come and they sit with us. Adam goes to bring his ID to the cop and I see him in a conversation, kind of having an exchange. And then I see him getting a little bit annoyed. So when he walked over, he kissed me hello. And then I said, what's up? Did we get in trouble already? Like I could tell he was, it was not a good conversation. He sits down and he goes, no contact. And I was like, I'm sorry. And he's like, no contact. Besides for that hug and kiss hello, we're not allowed to touch each other. And I was like, oh, it's fine. And he was really annoyed. And I'll tell you why he was really annoyed. Because he was in a high security prison for nine years, close to 10 years. And then he moved down to a medium security facility. When he moved, it took him a good six months to a year to unwind from all of that trauma that heightened emotion, the PTSD from being at such a high level security prison and then moving down, he had not been touched in 10 years, literally. So it took him six months to a year to get over that and to start feeling comfortable with touching me. I have a really good story. I'm actually going to save it about the institutionalization and what he went through when I realized how rough and how bad that was for him. I'll save it for another video because this is just the beginning, let me tell you. So he was upset about that. He said, things are getting so hostile here. And I really believe that they're trying to turn it into a maximum security level facility because of the way that they're changing things. They took away all of their boots. They're taking away the days that they could shop. They're making things really hostile. And he said the way that he thinks and the words that he's saying, it's starting to take him back to a bad place. That conditioning is starting to come back. So it was kind of scary, but we got through it. Day one, no problem. Day two, I'm driving up to the facility in the morning. And when you get onto the property of this specific prison, there's a long driveway. It's probably maybe like a hundred yards. And there used to be trees on either side of you because he's up in the mountains, but they took down all the trees at this institution because they're trying to really make it a prison. And God forbid you see trees in the nature or anything like that. No way. They need to punish you. So I'm coming up to this driveway, I'm pulling up and I see ahead of me about a hundred yards is a van, a prison van. There are two or three cops dressed in all black. I swear I remember them having guns, but I told Adam, I'm like, I don't know if they did or didn't. It's just how I remember it. He goes, they probably did. When you pull up to this facility, you could either make a left and then a quick right into the parking lot. If you go straight, there's a camp up ahead or up that hundred yards and you go straight and there's a little semicircle and that brings you to the front of the facility, the front door. Nobody really goes down there unless you have young children or you have an elderly person or a disabled person or a shuttle comes in that drops people off at the front door and then the driver will just pull around and go back up to the parking lot through that semicircle and park and then walk downstairs to go down in the front door. So the cop, when he stops me, the first thing I thought when I saw him was, oh crap, visit is canceled because I see that van is there, the cops are there and they have a roadblock up. 
So I can't make that left because the van and the roadblocks in the way. I rolled down my driver's side window to speak to him. He said, are you here for a visit? I said, yes. He said, okay, pull up to the front in the semicircle and they'll tell you what to do next. So I said, okay, now I started getting nervous. Do you guys know the feeling of having a cop behind you? Even if you're driving perfectly right, you're not doing anything wrong, you always automatically feel like you're doing something wrong and you're going to get in trouble. Like I always, I'm looking in my rear view mirror, my side view mirror so often when that happens that I feel like I'm swerving because I'm just scared. But even though I did nothing wrong, I'm doing nothing wrong. So anxiety takes over. I pull up and I knew, I've been doing this for so long, I knew exactly what was coming next. I knew what was going to happen. I pull up. There's probably 10 or 20 cops all dressed in black. Think about a subway station in the closest big city to you. When the cops are out or the military's out and you just see swarms of them together and it's, it's kind of scary in their cop clothes and their boots with their guns. It was scary. I don't think they had guns. I really don't. But a woman cop walks up to my window and I roll down. So I had both my windows down and she says, are you here for visit? I said, yes. She said, put your car in park and take your ID to the front. And again, I've been doing this for so long. I knew what was happening. Nobody told me what was happening, but I knew what was happening, but I was still kind of confused. Like what is happening right now? This has never happened before. So she says, Put, she wasn't mean about it, but she says, put your car in park and take your ID to the front. So I said, okay, can I roll up my windows? She goes, if you want to. She wasn't nasty by any means. She was firm, but she was not nasty. So I said, okay. I put my car in park. I start walking into the front door where I always walk in. And they were like, ma'am, ma'am, no, 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 ma'am, ma'am, come here. And I look over and right next to the front door to the left is a table set up. It was about 30 degrees out. So there was a heat, a heat fan. A heat I don't want to say heat lamp because it was blowing hot air I don't know what that's called blowing onto the cop that's sitting out there with a clipboard as I'm walking there I see about five cops swarm my car and they start searching it as they're searching it mind you the order that this is happening I'm walking up to the front door they tell me to go talk to that guy they're already searching my car he has me fill out paperwork okay so I filled out the paperwork I'm holding it and I I'm just like shaking. I'm so scared. I could barely speak. I was so scared. And then thank God, as soon as that feeling came, another feeling took over. Girl, you got nothing in your car. You don't have anything in your car. You've never had anything in your car. You've never had anybody who would have anything illegal in your car. Relax. So thank God I got relaxed and I started making jokes with that cop that was standing there with the heat lamp having the paperwork for people to fill out. And I was like, oh, they got their work cut out for them with my car. I'm like, I bring half my house with me when I come to visit you guys. I'm not kidding. First of all, I have a teeny tiny little Q3. So it's like a very, very, very tiny crossover SUV. I hate the name crossover, but like a little tiny SUV. There's not much room on the inside. Like I told Adam, we need a new car. When you come home, you're not going to fit in this thing. But the center console is full. The side is full. Like deodorants, a quadrillion pairs of sunglasses, my easy pass, tissues. Then I have all of my bags for a visit. I have all of my food packs. I have my hanging clothes. I have all of my camera equipment for YouTube, the glove compartment, jam packed, you name it, like tampons, tissues, cleaner for my car, you name it. It's in there. I have two boxes in my trunk that I still have in there of books from Adam, two huge boxes. I had a luggage with my stuff for visit. I had a huge extra bag with my makeup stuff and with my hair stuff. And then I had a huge light that I bought at Walmart that I needed to return. I had two boxes of shoes that I needed to return bags that I bought on the way to visit because I stop at the outlets and I get stuff that I can't get normally on the way, like my workout clothes, you guys. So finally it took them a good while to search my car. They're like, all right, ma'am, you're done. So I come over and the cop at the driver's side says to me, I couldn't get your sunglasses back in the console, so I left them on top of it. I said, no problem. I was like, whew, you earned your paycheck with me today. I was like, you got your work cut out for you with all the stuff I got in my car. He's like, it's no problem, ma'am. Like, nobody was there to play that day. They were on a mission. Nobody was joking around. Nobody was having fun. I don't know if they were given a directive from above. I'm sure they were. So he said to me, get in the car, go up in the parking lot, and then you can come down like normal for a visit. I said, okay. So I put my sunglasses 
it, I actually threw them in my purse because I didn't know what was going on in the console. And as I'm driving, stuff is rolling out from under the seats. I'm like, you, you couldn't put my sunglasses away. You were worried about that, but you weren't worried about the stuff that's rolling out from under the seats that could get caught underneath my pedals. But okay, no problem. So I drive up where they had the road blocked. They left a little part of it open so I could get my car through. The one positive about this, I have to say, is that they were only searching two cars at a time. So they had on that 100 feet or, yeah, probably like 100 yards where you pull in. They were lining up cars there, letting two at a time. So when you come down into the visit room, it's not over packed because there's no order. There's no way to know who came in before you until you just walk in the room and you're like, all right, who was last? You might get people that answer you. You might not. You have to kind of figure out who was there, or memorize everybody in the room before you. But if let's say there's 20 people in the room before you and then 20 people come after you and they're slowly calling people to get processed, you, you can't keep track of people. They're moving around the room. So that was kind of helpful. It's just my trying to make a silver lining of it. So I walk in, I'm the first person in, and the cop says to me, go in there and fill out your paperwork. I'm gonna start processing at 8.15. It was 8.09. So I was like, oh, he probably didn't realize that I filled out paperwork outside. So I sat down and I thought about it for a second. I was wearing button fly jeans. <sighs> Sometimes I've seen people come in with them. Nobody was there to play with me. I didn't want to get stuck at the back of the line. I just wanted to make sure everything went well. So like 8.10, I walk out to the front. I said, excuse me, sir, can I ask you a question? He's like, yeah. I said, do button flies usually give a problem? He was like, yeah, if they're metal. A zipper is metal as well. Those get through. But I said, okay, would you mind if I tried? He goes, yeah, no problem. I left my jacket on. I left my shoes on. I, I took my belt off. I left my... I left my pants on just in case you guys were wondering, but that could be questionable because we did have that girl who did take off her pants that I've told you about in my stories before she took off her pants. It was hysterical. I made a whole video about it. You guys thought it was great. I will link it up in the cards or below or you guys just go find it on the channel. It was, it's literally called she took off her pants. Anyway, I left mine on. I went through the metal detector. It went off. It went off probably because my jacket and my boots were on too, but it was just, I was like, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to my car to change just in case I don't want to hold anybody up today. Passed all the searchers, went back up to my car. Now my back windows are slightly tinted. It's the tint that came with my car. It is illegal to tint your front windows in New Jersey. So I don't, I'm not messing around with that. I don't need my car tinted out. I don't need to keep getting pulled over. I'm way too old for that. Not thinking, I took my jeans out of the back seat, but then I went into my driver's seat because I couldn't push the chair the seat all the way back and there's more room for me to change so I rip off my boots I rip off my pants I am sitting there with my jacket on a short jacket very very similar to this but it had sleeves zippered up my underwear no pants on and then I get this thought pops into my head right because the camp is right ahead there's no fences I'm like my god they're all right down there what if somebody comes and messes with me for changing in my car although they do not let you change in the bathrooms I'm like what if they try to give me some sort of ticket or something for changing in my car holy crap get your pants on girl I've never changed so fast in my whole entire life I was shaking got my pants on threw my boots on didn't put my belt back on I didn't lace up my boots or anything like that I walked back down as I'm coming back to the cops that are searching a car I see a woman cop that I'm very friendly with. She is such a doll. She's been a doll since day one. I talked about her in my good ones video. She was one of the cops that really like, she's just nice. She just works with you. She doesn't give you any problems. She's firm and she follows the rules and I'm totally fine with that, but she's nice. So I see her and I'm like, oh, I was just about in my head. I was like about to, oh my God, I have an ally, right? I, I know somebody, she's nice. We're friends, right? And I went to go be like, hi. And I thank God stopped myself because like I said, nobody is your friend there. Everybody's in cop mode. Nobody's there to play. I did not want to make her uncomfortable where all of her cop friends are around in cop mode, in us versus them mode. So I stopped myself and that's really sad because my natural reaction is to be like friendly and hi, but uh, -uh. everybody was on a mission that day and again, nobody was there to play. So I walk in, there was a girl who had beat me in while I was changing and a girl that walked in right behind me. The girl that came in in front of me was filling out paperwork and she said to us, she said, he told me that you guys have to fill out a second piece of paper because his name isn't on that first one. And I was like, 
the girl behind me even was like, why, why can't we just write his name on the paper? But whatever. So we start filling out the paperwork. At that point, we're all annoyed. I was venting. I was cursing a little bit. I'm like, WTF? This is ridiculous. Listen, it is not that they searched my car. I don't care. I had nothing in it. Obviously, I got in. I, had, I, I never planned to have anything in my car, ever. That's illegal. But here's the thing. If you want rules, make the rules as strict as you want them to be. That's fine. Keep them consistent, please. Because they change every single time we go. And it's just a pain in the butt. It just, it's hard to deal with. You guys know. So the rest of processing went fast. It was great. No problems. Although nobody was there to play. Nobody was being friendly as far as cops. Everybody was in cop mode. Everybody that day, even the cops in the visit room were not there to play. They were nice enough, but nobody was going out of the way to be friendly. Adam comes out of the back. We say hello. And I was like, whew. Did you see what was going on? Because from the yard, they could see the front of the prison. And I forgot, he doesn't go out to the yard usually when it's cold like this. So he goes, no. And then he goes, oh, car search, as I heard that was going on. He said they did that a couple of weeks ago. I sat down and I was like, yeah. And I walked him through what happened. I came up to the front of the building. They told me to drive up there. And then that lady told me to bring my stuff up to the front. She started searching my car. He goes, wait a second. They did not ask you if they could search your car. I said, no. He's like, nobody told you that they were searching your car. I said, well, I filled out that paperwork. I was like, so it was my consent. Oh, I forgot this part because when I brought my paperwork to the cop to process me, when they were processing me into the back, he said, that first piece of paper is yours. The second one is mine. I keep that here. That first one's your consent. And I said, okay. And then he was like, you take it. And I said, okay. And then he was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to take them. So clearly everyone was just on the fly making things up as they went because they haven't done this before. But he said, I'll take it. So he took it. And then, so when I told Adam this later, I was like, but that paperwork was my consent. And he said, but you didn't consent to it. You didn't sign that paper. They didn't see you sign that paper. Nobody asked you for that. He goes, they're not law enforcement. And even law enforcement can not subject you to a car search. They have to ask you first and you have to consent to it. I said, well, first of all, I knew exactly what they were doing. I said, if I had anything to hide, I would have turned around, but I don't. I got nothing to hide. I had no problem with them searching my car. I've been working with prison lot wives for long enough that I knew this was coming next and I didn't have a problem with it. He goes, it doesn't matter. Your rights were violated, Ro. You need to call the attorney on the way home. I said, okay, I kind of brushed him off. Okay, right? And I told you earlier in this video, Adam's starting to get back to the point, as are all the inmates there where it's us versus them. His mind is starting to just revert back to that inmate mentality, which is so sad because it took so long for him to unwind from that. And this is just going to make the institutionalization worse and the PTSD worse when he comes home. It's so sad to me. One of the cops comes over to me because not only are you not allowed to touch, you're not allowed to move your chairs closer to one another. And there's about four or five feet between you. So it's really hard to hear. And you're not allowed anymore to lean in and hear each other. You're not allowed to be that close. The people next to us were just very loud people. They talked loud. They were screaming. We couldn't hear each other. So at one point I was sitting at the end of my chair and I had leaned in. The cop came over and he goes, you need to sit back. So I said to him, I said, I'm sorry. I was like, listen, I shift around in my chair a lot. I said, I have a bad hip injury. It's really, really painful for me. So I just have to move because I'm sitting for so many hours. I just kind of have to shift around in my chair. As I'm talking to the cop, I see Adam morph into like protective husband mode. And I just see him watching, see him watching, right? Watching the cop, watching me. The cop was not being a jerk. He was not being a jerk whatsoever. Adam looks at me and he goes, your chair. And the cop says to me, I could see from the monitor that it's angled. I didn't know what he was talking about. Adam looks at me again real quick, like protective mode, like watching him, watching me, watching him, watching me. He was like, move your chair back. Not in a, he was just like, he's talking about your chair, like protecting me. It was just like sad to watch because it's never been like that before. We've always had such a friendly relationship with these people because we don't break the rules. They know we're just there to see each other. They know we're not there to start problems. They always send people to us to help. It's just, it's, it's, oh, it's 
sad that they've taken that many steps backwards. It's gotten so hostile there. And I pushed my chair back. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that's what you were asking me. I thought you were upset that I was leaning forward in my chair. And then he walked away. I got embarrassed a little bit about that. And it took Adam a second to like unwind. And then we just kept going. So at the end of visit, right when I'm getting ready to leave, maybe we have 10 minutes left. He said, so you're going to call the attorney on the way home. You feel comfortable doing that? And I stopped for a second. I took a breath and I said, no, the answer is no, absolutely not. I said, do you really think that's a good idea? Because he knows I get shy with this kind of stuff and I'm hesitant to make these calls and to make waves. I said, listen, I said, you and I both know that they're going to claim safety and security any time that they need. I said, there are no cameras outside. Nobody saw or heard if they asked me, nobody was watching when I signed that paper. You and I both know my rights were violated. I don't care. I said, I don't ever have anything in my car. I don't have any, ever have anything to hide. They're more than welcome to search my car. I don't care. I said, if you and I start making waves now, you know next time I come and they search my car, they're going to find something in it. And then that's going to either be charges on me or I'm not going to be able to see you. You know everything I go through to come here. You know that our hands are tied, that we have no control and we're not going to win. And do we need that right now while we're so close to getting you out and we're fighting this fight? Is that what we need the lawyer to work on? And is that what we need to turn our attention to? Because you and I both know we're not going to win this one. And he stopped for a second. I'm saying that kind of in a harsh way. I was saying it more in a like a, it's me and you, babe. Like, <laughs> babe, girl. <laughs> I was like saying it in a way like, it's me and you. And I understand what you're saying. And I know what you mean. But I also don't know that we need to do this. And I said to him, I go, you know that I'm right. And he goes, don't call him. Defeat. And I could tell he was just, he's in protective mode of me. And he hates that I have to go through this. And he appreciates it so much. It's getting dark out. I'm sorry. I just want to say this really quick before I end this video. I got an email from him the next day. If I could find it, it's hard because you can't search through core links. Like in, e like in our normal emails out here, I could just search words and it'll pull up all of the emails with that term in there. I can't search in core links. But basically he said, thank you for putting up with everything that you've put up with for all of these years. I don't know. Oh, it's going to make me emotional. I don't know how I could ever pay you back for everything that you've done to stay by my side. Like basically he said, I don't deserve this. He said, but I will be happy to spend every single day of the rest of my life showing you how grateful I am for you. And that's what I want to pass along to you guys, no matter what, no matter how hard it gets for you, no matter how stressed out they get and sometimes take it out on you. Like I was saying the other day with that bad phone call when he was on me about buying a screw for my ring light, which I did buy and it helped me so much. I just did two interviews with it today and it stayed up beautifully. He was right. But the point is they appreciate you and everything you do when all is said and done. You are their light in this darkness. You are their escape in this oh, caged life that they live. And even though they make visit rules and they really inflict their power, grin and bear it. Try not to make waves because getting in there is the most important thing. My cute button fly jeans, whatever. He'll see them in a picture or when he comes home. I grinned, I bared it, and honestly, if you've got nothing to hide, you got nothing to hide. I have no reason to be upset when they search my car. I've got nothing in it. By the way, make sure, if you're not subscribed to this channel, to please hit that subscribe and ding that notification bell so you never miss a new video. And if you haven't liked this video and you like my content, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. I love you guys so much. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one.